Good morning, Sectus. I'm Mr. Xiao, and today I'll be teaching the lesson on comparison. Um, at this point, you have learned the skills of inference, message, and purpose. You know how to deal with one source, how to look at the information from a source to extract ideas about a question focus, or to find the main argument of that source, or to figure out why the source was published and what objectives it has and what it wants to achieve. Having learned how to deal with one source successfully, comparison is a skill that demands that we look at two sources at once and put them side by side and to figure out whether they are similar or they agree or whether they are different and disagree. So before I proceed with my lesson, please make sure to have this worksheet with you and at any point, you may speed up, slow down or pause the video to suit your learning pace. And so let's proceed. Uh, in this lesson, you will learn how to craft a combined inference for similarity. So notice that we are going back to our skill of inference, but this time the inference will be done on two sources simultaneously. If the sources are similar, we will craft a combined inference. And if the sources are different, we will craft a set of contrasting inferences. So highlight these lines. And let me ask you, why do you think that we use a combined inference for similarity? Why is there only one inference, a combined inference, if we have two sources? The answer, of course, is because you are making the argument that these sources are similar, are in agreement, are saying about the same thing. And that's why you just need one inference to show what the sources are saying, because they are saying the same thing. And so let's go down. Again, comparison is about similarity and difference or the question may also be phrased as agreement and disagreement. And let's look at this answering frame. Now, you don't want to write anything on this box. You do not want to write anything in this box because this answering frame is a generic answering frame, a generic writing frame that will assist you in answering any comparison question. So, what do I mean? Don't write anything. Again, don't write anything. I'm just going to give you an example of a question I could ask. So, a question I could ask is, how similar are sources X and Y? It's a very classic question, right? Very typical. So, suppose I have asked this question, how then do we use the answering frame to help us? So we would go with sources, right? X and Y are, are similar, right? We could start with that. Um, we can ignore the criterion because for similarity, we jump straight to the combined inference. So similar because both sources Both sources tell me that that's something. So this is the combined inference. And then it's evident from source X. This is the evidence from source X. And from Y. And that is how we do it. That is how we do it. That's the generic answering frame. Um, an example. Both sources tell me that uh, the Japanese were especially harsh on the local people because they beat and tortured uh, Singaporeans. This could be an example of a combined inference. Let me see that. What if I wanted to do uh, the other side, the difference? Okay, so, so again, I have this answering frame, this blank temp, this blank frame that that I'm not going to touch. And this time I want to look for the difference. 
So sources X and Y again are different. And this time I need a com I need a criterion. For difference, I need a criterion. What's a criterion? It is a basis of comparison. It is a, a standard or a benchmark by which we look at two different sources and say that yes, they are actually talking about opposite things, opposite things. So I need a criterion to set up contrasting inferences. What does that look like? Suppose my criterion is source X is what are different in terms of whether the Japanese succeeded in winning the loyalty of people in Singapore. Read this criterion for yourself. Read this criterion for yourself. And of course, for a difference, I'm no longer using a combined inference. I'm using a set of contrasting inferences. So I hope you have read the criteria. I'm just going to type out source access inference. Tells me that. Let's look at this answer. Suppose I have aim for difference and I say sources X and Y are different in terms of whether the Japanese succeeded in reading the loyalty of people in Singapore. Source X tells me that the Japanese did not succeed in winning the loyalty of people in Singapore because they were all treated brutally and harshly. What do I do next? Whereas source Y, right? And how do I do the contrast here? How do I do the contrast here? It would be that, tells me that the Japanese did succeed. And explain my answer, right? Because they provided food and supplies to the poor. Look at how I have used my crit criterion whether the Japanese succeeded in winning the loyalty of people, use, use the criterion to generate the contrasting inferences. Japanese did not succeed. The Japanese did succeed. The explanation from the source can, of course, be, be slightly different. But the key here is that I've generated a set of very clearly contrasting inferences. And this would set up my difference. One side, source access did not succeed. Source Y says, did succeed, and that's the difference. Imagine I didn't have this criterion. Imagine I just went into this. Imagine I just went into this. Sources X and Y are different. Source X says people are treated brutally. Source Y says the Japanese provided food and supplies. Right. Notice the difference. Notice the, the change. Notice that this is no longer a very clear set of contrasting inferences. Yes, they're talking about different things. X says about bad treatment and Y says about providing food. But I no longer have my contrasting inferences. This answer would fail this answer will be fixed at L1 because there is no comparison or no valid criterion, which is why this setup for the contrasting inference is so important, which is why even though similarity just uses a combined inference, the difference demands the criterion to be set up. Whether the Japanese succeeded, one says yes, they did. The other says no, they did. So pause this and digest it if you need to. See again the difference between the difference. See how the similarity and the difference are done in their own ways. And these are the content level comparisons we have learned so far using our knowledge of inference. Using our knowledge of inference. Inference from two sources. Inference from two sources. A combined inference is for similarity and a contrasting inference is for difference. So these are 
what we would call content level comparisons, there is a higher level comparison that I will also teach today, and that is a purpose comparison. So let's look at this. The strongest answers will compare the purpose of two sources. And if we want to look at similarity, uh, no surprise here, we look at one combined purpose. Both sources want to convince Singaporeans that the Japanese are here to provide benefits and freedom and joy. Um, this is evident from the source A that says this and source B that says that. This is done so that Singaporeans will look up to the Japanese and provide support and want to help the Japanese in their occupation. One combined inference. If it's different, if you think the purposes are different, you explain two contrasting purposes. Two contrasting purposes. And so this is where your knowledge of message and purpose comes in because you now need to go beyond inference. You need to figure out the purpose of the sources and to look at uh, whether the purposes are aligned or misaligned, whether they are in agreement or in disagreement, whether they are similar or whether they are different. And let me conclude with this on the comparison of purpose. The purpose comparison only takes place on one side. So if you think that the purposes are similar, you cannot proceed and say in the next paragraph that the purposes are different. You choose purpose comparison for one side. And the other side, you do a content comparison. Uh, technically, if you don't know how to do purpose for two sources, although I think you should start trying and practicing, but if you aren't sure how to do the purpose for two sources, go and do the usual content comparison for both sides. Go and do the usual oh, combined inference for one side with evidence and explain. A contrasting inference for the other side Explain with evidence. But the strategy towards mid-year and end of year is one side content, one side purpose. Okay, so I've spoken for a while. Let's proceed. We are going to look at the Hockney Bus Riots as our uh, case study in order to practice comparison. So let's highlight 1950s in Singapore. Right, the British were suspicious of the communists, and workers were frustrated, which combined to create a febrile. Oh, here's a new word for you: febrile social atmosphere, ripe for unrest and riot. Right, the British suspicions and the trade union activism are creating uh, an environment where people are uh, agitated. Uh, People think that they have a certain level of power and autonomy uh, and they uh, think that they are rightly fighting for a just cause, they are rightly dissatisfied. And when you combine the ideas of you know, moral righteousness and um, weapons of social uh, collective action, you, you get situations of unrest and riot. So in particular, in 1955, there was a company called the Hockley Bus Company the Hockney Bus Company uh, didn't manage to persuade its workers. Specifically, they just didn't want to grant any concessions. And I think in this case, in the labour dispute, the workers had a certain moral upper hand uh, because the company just didn't want to give them anything. Uh, so they went on strike. And the company fired the striking workers. They said, you don't want your job? Fine. I have all these other people who want your job. So, so you know, you, you can just leave. And the workers were upset. They blocked the bus bus depots. Uh, masses of Chinese students, Chinese students just involved in every riot from 1954. They just have nothing better to do. They keep rushing down. They keep joining these riots. Um, of course, the point is that the more people, the more human mass you have putting up these protests, everyone feels empowered. And it's easier to trigger and escalate a situation. It might not even have been a worker that started the first, the first stone. It could have been a student. So again, the more people you have involved, firstly, it exacerbates the situation because the demonstrators and protesters feel empowered, the safety in numbers. They can't possibly arrest 10,000 of us, right? Oh, sorry, in this case, 2,000. Oh, safety in numbers. And secondly, 
because there are more people, they feel like their cause is just and right. Why would people support us if we were fighting for the wrong thing? So they feel like the fact that their popular support means that they're fighting for a just, moral, and correct reason. And thirdly, the more people there are, there are, the harder it is to control a crowd. Misunderstandings can happen at any time. Someone can throw the first stone and it escalates very quickly. Okay, so these are three reasons why masses of Chinese middle school students makes everything much more tense and uh, explosive. And indeed, it explodes on 12th May. A major riot breaks out. There are 2,000 people. Four of them will, will, not, will not survive. Okay, so this is the context of the Pong Lee bus riots. Uh, we have spoken about this through our historical investigation and in class. Um, so let's look at the sources. Source A is a photograph of the, the striking workers. I think you can notice that um, what are they doing? They're picking up stones, right? They're picking up stones. Um, of course, the point is that you pick up a stone and you throw it at the bus the property of a bus company, the company is not going to be happy. They'll probably call in police police officers to, to deal with your uh, illegal property damage actions. Uh, and of course, that escalates the tension. Source B. Uh, Source B speaks about the police using water hoses on the workers, workers hitting back with bricks and stones. Oh, here's, here it's pretty interesting, right? Here, there's a different perspective presented. Because in source A, we only saw the workers throwing stones. But in source B, now we, now we get this sense that the workers were throwing stones because they were fired on by the police with water hoses. Um, this is not a bathtub kind of like water shower. This is like high pressure water jets intending to push people back in a crowd. So it's, it can cause injury. And this source actually is quite sympathetic to the, to the workers, right? It, it shows that um, the workers didn't start the fight. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the question. How far do sources A and B agree? The command word here is agree. And so when I answer the question, I answer with agree and disagree. Once I answer the question, I proceed with the same technique I have been using all along which is the combined inference and the set of contrasting inferences. So let's look at it. The first argument is an agreement. So I'm going to write agree here. Agree. It's telling me that the Hockney bus riots broke out due to the violent actions taken by the striking laborers. Okay. So in this case, the combined inference has already been crafted for you. The inference here, the combined inference is that violent actions um, created the, the situation of a riot, and in particular, by the striking laborers. So let's look at source A. What evidence can I look at to support this inference? Well, I can see um, a large number of workers who are picking up, <clears throat> picking up stones well, to use against the property of the Hockley bus, uh, Hockley bus company. And in fact, if you had a very sharp eye, these over here are policemen. I can see just the fringes of their uniform and their beret here. So at the very end here are some policemen. Um, okay. Which shows um, the workers camping outside the company using picking up stones to hurl at and attack buses and policemen, company buses and policemen. Right. Okay, so I have the evidence from source A. And source B, which part of source B shows me that it was the laborers? Um, okay, not the police, right? Probably the workers. The workers hit that. So this sentence would be the one. So now I have my I have my combined inference and my evidence.
and this would be four marks. Okay, now I've done my agreement. I want to do a disagreement. I challenge you to pause this video, to pause this video, and and try to figure out the contrasting inference for yourself. Explain this contrasting inference, and then choose the right evidence. So again, I challenge you to pause this video and try it for yourself. And I hope you did it. So let me go through. So this agreement here, I, I have a criterion, whether the Chinese students played a major role. Uh, and already from the criterion I set up, uh, it's going to be blindingly clear how I'm going to play out this disagreement, right? If one source says they didn't play a major role, the other source would say they did play a major role. And then I explain. So the criterion is the magic pill. Once you have set up a criterion, the contrasting inferences will flow out like water. They will be so clear. You can set up the opposition very nicely. So source A tells me that the Chinese students did not play a major role because it was the striking work workers, laborers who took the lead in attacking the company's property. Whereas source B, already just by looking at this, I know what I'm going to write, tells me that the Chinese students did play a major role in provoking the riots because, and now I need to explain the, in, the contrasting inference, because which evidence do I want? Chinese students here, they sympathize because they, they came down in large numbers to support the striking workers. Support and encourage. And I can use this. And we know this, we know that the Chinese students actually um, actually came in large numbers. There was song and dance, they went to sing and, and, and for the workers, uh, they went to share their share their grievances from the riots the previous year, share their experience from the national anti-national service riots. So all these people put together the masses of two thousand of them are creating this febrile social atmosphere. So we have Source B contrasting inference. Last one is source A evidence, which shows. Oh, I guess we can use a similar evidence for source A, the workers. Only workers and not Chinese middle school students outside the company, camping outside the company. And throwing stones. Okay, so I hope you managed to set this up. I hope you managed to set this up. And where are you left with after this? After you do the contrasting inferences, but suppose you did the agreement correctly, you'll be now at five marks and six marks. So this set of answers, agree and disagree, um, combined inference and contrasting inferences, both explained, both supported, this set of answers will be worth six out of eight marks. Six out of eight marks. So the last two marks are in the purpose comparison. But at this point, are we clear about the content comparison? Do you know how to do this? Uh, look at it, reflect, see if you know how to do it. Um, and let me just wrap up with the next, the next set of comparisons. Okay. So the next set of comparisons are sources B and C. And um, I just want to say that I didn't really have space to do sources B and C, uh, to do source C on one page. So in your worksheet, source C will flow to the next page. Source C has two paragraphs. So just take note of that, please. Okay, how different are sources B and C? Oh, look, I've done the combined inference for you again. So 
So, okay, I guess, I guess this worksheet holds your hand a little bit. It helps you a little bit. The command word here is different. So I need to use the similarity and difference as my answer to the question. So the first one is similarity. Sources B and C are similar. I'm telling me many people in and cute during the hot Levas riot. Oh, I just need to choose evidence. I guess it's here, right? So the similarity, I'm just going to highlight in yellow. Four dead and 31 injured. Okay, I have the evidence for similarity. Um, I guess this is a pretty pretty easy similarity to hit. Okay. Um, if you haven't already done so, can I encourage you to pause and read source C? Pause and read source C. Oh, sorry, I should have said that earlier before I started on the question. I was still excited. Oh, and we have done similarity. So now let's look at the difference. Source B and C are different in terms of who was to blame. Source B says both the police and protesting workers were to blame. Whereas Source C tells me that... Okay, so Source B does blame both of them, right? So I guess it's here. The police deployed water hoses. And the workers and students hit back. So I think this would be the evidence to show both are to blame. So what, what is Saucy saying? Who is to blame? Okay, let's take a look. Um, the judge tried to solve this labor dispute, this dispute between the Hockley bus company and the bus drivers. This was rejected. Um, and the strike turned from a legitimate labor dispute. The word legitimate here means, um, you know, fair or uh, reasonable. So that's what legitimate means. So what is this source is saying is that before that, this labor dispute or this labor dispute here would mean um this uh, argument or this agreement between the worker and company. That's what a labor dispute means. So before that, this this agreement was a fair one. It was a reasonable one, but it turned to a mass demonstrator demonstration a demonstration is a protest ripped up ripped up right what does ripped up mean it means um uh be uh being enlarged being uh stoked being um increased by political political agitators so these people uh, have a certain purpose emotional meetings are held um Students and workers have hostility towards the police and the agitation came to a head. So, just by looking at this source, although it's a bit tricky, it's a bit tricky initially, you can see that um, the source is not sympathetic to the protesters. It's saying that the workers and students here are purposely creating a certain situation they are purposely trying to start a fight so i think this would be the the evidence right okay you could also use the, the sentence here previously this will also help you but let's just focus on this which tells me that the protesting workers and students, I think this will be it. Oh, you should try this on your own first. I'm sorry. Can you try on your own? Pause, try on your own. And then let's do it. Because they, they stoked the anger and resentment and created more tension towards hostility uh, authorities and hostility. 
towards the authorities. Uh, source B, which states this. Okay, so let's look just at the Let's look just at the similarity and difference. Um, similar because they, they both say that many people were injured and killed during the Hotly bus riots. Um, Evident from, you know, four people dead, two, two policemen, one student, one American newsman, many injured. Different in terms of who was to blame. Source B is very balanced. It says the police used water hoses, the workers and students hit back. It says both police and protesting workers were to blame because both sides used violent means. Whereas Source C says it's really the workers and students who created this political situation, right? They had a certain purpose. They rejected the judge's mediation. And so, because they stoked the anger and resentment and rejected the solution by the judge, they are to blame. And then we have the evidence. So at this point, at this point, um, similar to what I have done previously, I'll show you where the marks are. Three marks, four marks for similarity. Um, criterion and contrasting inferences, five. Assuming you've done the similarity correctly, this will be five. If you did this wrongly, this will be three. Six. And now we want to do try purpose. We want to try purpose for the first time. So when we look at the two sources, right? I think it was very obvious that sources B and C, what do you think? Were they similar or different in purpose? Source B was the one about reporting about the, the police use water hoses, the workers and students hit back, they carried chong long chong. And source C is this um, few staff, uh, Arthur Doak Barnett, this American guy who's writing about current affairs. So, I think it's quite clear that they're writing for different audiences. So I think I need to... Yeah. And look at this. Source B is... um educational history website. Source C is, um, is writing for the universities. They have different audiences. The fact that they have different audiences here right, suggests that they might desire different things for their audiences. They might have different desired outcomes. And furthermore, this was in 1955. Source C was sent in 1955. Source B is published and is still around today. 2022. So different audiences, different time, different context. You already have a whiff of a suspicion that the purposes are going to be different. So how do we do a difference in purpose? How do we do a difference in purpose? Um, so first of all, because we have decided that the purposes are different, I'm going to write this down here, different in purpose. And I want to show you something very interesting. So let's first take some time to read this difference. Read this difference. Difference in purpose. Source B wants to educate. So this is a new verb I'll teach you. Educate. Because it's a history website, right? The history website wants to educate online readers. That both the police and protesting workers and students were to blame because they use violent means. Evidence from Source B. And so that online readers, again, the audience, will have a nuanced and balanced view of Singapore's history and be able to judge the past events and actors in proper context. Online readers will understand history, judge the events with the proper historical context. Verb 1. Audience 1. Message 1. Outcome 1. So notice that something very interesting. This is very similar to something we have just written. Think about it, think about it, and let's continue. 
Saucy wants to inform the American universities that, process, that it was the protesting workers and students who were to blame because they rejected the fair settlement and stirred up anger and bad feelings towards the authorities. Evident from Saucy, which states a solution was rejected, emotional meetings were held. So that the American universities, which is the audience, who have a clear insight on labor unrest and agitation in Singapore, have a better understanding in the 1950s. Again, the different time period means that the outcome is probably going to be very different. Verb 2, audience 2, message 2, outcome 2. So what? Have we understood from this comparison of purpose? Firstly, we decided whether or not the purpose was similar or different. On the basis of the provenance of the two sources, the audience is different, the time context is different, the objectives are probably different. We decided that the purpose is going to be different. If it's a difference in purpose, like we said all the way at the start, if it's a difference in purpose, we need two sets of contrasting purposes from both sources, FAMO 1 and FAMO 2. We need two purposes, FAMO 1 and FAMO 2. And so I did write two purposes here. I did write VAMO 1, different in purpose. One is educate online readers about this message. Two is inform American universities about this message. And then you have the outcome 1 and outcome 2. So all this is in line with what we have learned. What is interesting here is that actually your message one and message two, both the police and protesting workers were to blame because both sides used violent means. Message two, only the protesting workers and students were to blame because they rejected the fair settlement and stirred up the anger and bad feelings. What have you noticed about these two contrasting messages? It's actually the same as the contrasting inferences. It's the same. In other words, once you have decided which side your purpose is going to be on, you just need to add in the verb, audience, and outcome to what you have figured out for the difference or the similarity. Purpose just uses the same set of contrasting inferences, right? But transforms it into two different purposes. So, go back, digest this, look at how we transform the contrasting inferences here. The contrasting inferences here to the set of contrasting purposes. And this purpose answer, the full purpose answer, is um, this means that if I were just to write this purpose answer, I got the purpose correct, the site is correct, it's a difference in purpose, I wrote exactly this answer, by itself it's 8 marks. Uh, but you are never sure whether you can hit the purpose correctly, so you should always write two sides. One side on content, one side on purpose. In this case, if you write the difference in purpose, you should also write the similarity in content. Similar in saying that, um, you know, the riots cause many deaths and injuries. If you write a similarity in purpose, you should follow up with a difference in content. So either way, you should always have one similarity and one difference. Or one agreement and one disagreement, depending on the command word of the question. Okay, so this is my lesson on comparison. It's been a bit long. Uh, the worksheet still has three questions, so uh, questions three, four, and five. I encourage you to try these on your own on Fullscap. Uh, most likely, I'll assign it as homework at some point. Um, and if you have any questions about comparison, first, go back to page one, look at the answering frame. Does this answering frame help you? Second, look at the examples we did on page two, three, and four. Do these examples help you? And you still need help for comparison, book a consult uh, with your friends, with your, with your group mates, uh, come find me, and we'll discuss it. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you, and have a good uh, term two ahead.